first down will get four up to the 29. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 29, Prescott. Wide open, Amari Cooper. Past the 20. This is Touchdown, crazy. Cowboys. Amari Cooper, 71 yards. And the Cowboys on just two plays have taken the lead. Well, if they didn't get the wake-up call before the game, they got it right now. Two plays already in the end zone. I think of it in boxing terms because whether it's a big shot with your first one or a probing one, a little bit of a jab, the second one was the payoff. That was the big one that landed. One, two, end zone. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 26. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Eight yards to go on second down. A handoff to Fournette. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. Here's a give to Fournette. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Leonard Fournette. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Ready to throw on third and one. Took up with his all pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And he is going to have the Bucks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Hey, D-line, let's get in there. Let's get in there, 
On second and seven, Brady. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. But when you're going up against a talented receiver like that, you just know that they're going to bring more people to him, right? They've got to double cover him every chance they get. I think that that is what we're going to see all game long, an early taste of that double, maybe even sometimes triple coverage we might see. Yeah, I think what they're counting on, his talent to sometimes beat that double coverage. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. To throw is Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Shotgun now for Brady. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Evans. And the Buccaneers are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, Brandon, obviously no panic in them. They gave up the touchdown. You know, their defensive side did that. But he's already taken them back downfield. I love this field general that they've got. It's almost like he went to the defensive captain and said, don't worry about it. We've got you. Now we got first and goal. Yeah, we're seeing punch counter punch, and this could be setting the table for quite the game. I like that. Let's, let's go ahead and put it in the boxing ring, right? You're going to get hit sometimes. Can you respond and hit back? And they're trying to do exactly that. Now Brady. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off inside the five. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10, Woo, five, and he five. takes this one back into the end zone, and the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. And this defense looking like they have come to play the pick six, and just like that, it's 13-0 early on. Well, go back with me to our training camp visits. What do we hear during these drills? Oh, pass. pass. Ball. Ball's in the air. And then my favorite. Oski. That's the interception. <laughs> that means everybody finds someone to block. Block them legally. Stay on your feet. And they get it done. Touchdown. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And following the pick six, and they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. 
And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. They told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. When you're struggling on of offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Brady now on first down. Over the middle, that's taken in by Gronkowski. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. First down, Brady. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. And down inside the 15 he goes. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Brady. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. It's Brady. Again for Evans. This time he's got him. And the box are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves him all the way down to the one. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They hand off to their big tight end. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Cameron Bray taking it in from a yard out. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life <laughs> out on the field, don't they? And we just saw that on that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice game there. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. I may be an analyst, but I'm also a fan. I love it when people take the big shots downfield, but he was under a lot of duress. And I think that forced the incompletion downfield. Didn't have a real good chance to find his target. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. <laughs> Press.
Nebraska now. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Credit the sack to Vita Vea. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to have to put a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something like that. <laughs> They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys, after the sack, it's third and long. Trying to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track and it cost him. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Under pressure, they got him again. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. That throw by Brady incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Brady. That quick pass here to Godwin. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Again, it's Brady. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 39. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Here's second and 10. going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Wait, 
Throwing now is Brady. That's complete to Tyler Jackson. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 19. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They give it off here to the tight end. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Cameron Bray with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point put through by Suckham, and we are tied here in the second quarter. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And they've got less than 30 seconds to go here, so not a lot of time to work with. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he'll be out right at the 35. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Prescott to throw it. Open man, right side, it's Lamb. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Back to back, good plays have them on the move on first down. draw play Elliott and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up and offensively they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter now Greg Zerline we all remember the 57 yarder that sent the Rams to the Super Bowl they spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they take a 17-14 lead. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the 1-2 to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal. Not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. Taken from about the 12. A 
that's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. A field goal, the difference. 17-14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. On first and 10, here's Brady. This is caught by Evans. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. to throw it's Brady goes right side complete to Gronk and he's brought down back to back good plays have him on the move on first down here's Brady and nowhere to fit that football in it's knocked away and incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Brady to throw again. And this all incomplete. He tried to check it down to his running back and nearly had the ball picked. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Throwing his Brady on third down. Gets it to his running back, Bernard. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Brady now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. So now they'll come up on second and 10 once again from the 28. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Brady going to throw. Oh, that's 
into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Brown. And the Cowboys are going to take possession here as they've got it at their own four-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big-time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They just get the playoff. Now Prescott. He finds his target. It's Schultz. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now Prescott. And he'll go underneath here to Elliott. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Second and four. Prescott yet again. And he's caught by Lamb. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 39. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Prescott. get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
second and two. gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines and all of a sudden they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. What a big fourth quarter fumble recovery a moment ago. And now they are set up with a chance to take the lead. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Second down, back to Fournette. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Bucks on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and four. Brady now to throw. He completes it to Evans. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Inside the 40. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. to pick up about four it's second down well in every play call you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game trying to establish the inside run run with toughness now hopefully get to the perimeter later and let's face it you could do Worse than a four-yard run on first down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Hey, check it. 55. Right there in the middle. 55. Come on. You better break. Watch it. Switch. 
Now Brady. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. A field goal from this spot would be 51 yards. They'll try to move it closer on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. That's complete, Bernard. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll get two or three out of that one as that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. A gain of three, second down. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They face a second down, but they are in field goal range. Fournette once more on second down. 53 yards on the ground for him so far. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. And they've got another first and 10 as the penalty keeps this drive moving. On the run, it's Fournette. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll run with Fournette. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Heavy set out there on third and one. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. Uh-uh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. The carry here for the big tight end. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Add that one to the good run tally right there. He's been strong throughout this game. And there's no reason to suggest he's going to slow down in the fourth quarter at all. And that's exactly what they need him to do. Keep churning out first downs. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. 
And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow, wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. On the return, Tony Pollard from his end zone. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Here's Dak. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.